of the entire animal kingdom, no being is as mentally advanced as the Homo sapien. When it comes to overall cognitive ability, humans have no equal. But this psychological superiority is a double-edged sword. We can forge unique materials not found in nature to build grand structures. We can fabricate sounds to produce beautiful music. Our imaginations can come up with the most fantastical of stories. We can even peer out into the cosmos and find a way to see the unseeable. But it's because our minds are so advanced that we wonder, what is any of this all for? It seems that most, if not all human beings, are born with this need. An existential need for purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. In our world, people typically tend to fill it with some form of religion. But whether it's religion, artistic expression, or even sex, it can all be used for this purpose. To feel as if you have a purpose. To give meaning to your existence. And to ultimately give you a sense of fulfillment. In The Myth of Sisyphus and other essays, Albert Camus wrote, The absurd is born of this confrontation between the human need and the unreasonable silence of the world. It makes me think of another quote by Arthur C. Clarke. Two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe, or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Religion is honestly the perfect middle ground. You can believe that the universe is not indifferent to your actions, that your existence does carry meaning, but lacking definitive proof, you can still have the necessary doubt to be comfortable. For me and everything there must be doubt, otherwise there's no room to question the land. And, gosh, look at this place, this is the fruit. Unquestioned, ferocious conviction, this is where absolute certainty leads. Star Wars depicts a world in which the universe is quite loud and not at all indifferent. It makes a point of filling this void of yours. You're given a purpose, you're given a meaning, and a fulfillment through your destiny. It's all handed to you by an energy field we call the Force. This religion called the Force. It's there when you're born and it's there the day you die. In fact, it's probably there even before you're born and it's most definitely there after you're dead. Very few are ever lucky enough or unlucky enough to even get a chance to find their own purpose in life. I say unlucky because the process of becoming a wound in the Force is extremely traumatic. To hear the force over such pain, it is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure, and it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished, all those you had fought with and struggled with. Consider that a person who becomes a wound in the force starts to feel empty inside, as if immediately thrusted into some kind of existential crisis. It can present itself as a hunger that must be satiated, as pain that must be treated, but overall as a void that needs to be filled. It is a way that they fill the hollow places where the Force used to be. Consider the Force as being a type of religion. A religion that from the moment you're born, you're indoctrinated into it. Much like in real life, but in this case, you can't escape it. It's flowing through you and you don't get a say. You don't get the consent. You don't choose to believe in it or not. It's there whether you like it or not. There. Do you feel that exile? It cuts through your defenses as unprepared for such an attack as you are. Let that pain be a lesson. It's part of you as much as one of your organs. It's always been there, influencing you, guiding you, giving you a sense of purpose and meaning, driving you to your destiny to feel fulfilled. Once, a Jedi showed me the Force. I heard it. I felt it. Now imagine it being ripped out of you. A trauma leaves you disillusioned with your religion. Everything that you believed in, everything that gave you meaning, that sense of purpose and promised fulfillment all comes crashing down. That's kind of how I imagine a force wound to feel like, or how Vizaz Amar felt when she saw the universe for what it was, without the filter of the force. When the life was bled from the planet, and yet somehow I remained. My master came for me. He walked upon the surface of my dead world. And there, lying in the bodies of my race, he took me for his own. And he made me see 
and for the first time I saw the galaxy, and I wished to die. To this galaxy, my world, absent the currents and spectrums of the Force, was nothing but crude matter, rock, flesh, emptiness. The way the Exile sees the galaxy, the way the Jedi Council live in fear of seeing the galaxy, and perhaps for good reason. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force. To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. To live life without the Force, to vanish and die and leave only an echo, it was terrifying. To be connected to all life around you, then to have it stripped, I can only imagine what it must have been like for you. But even that imagining cannot compare with the truth. You were deafened. At last, you could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. You can say that they saw the truth and consider it a positive thing. She has brought truth and you condemn it. The arrogance. But you have to understand that for many, a lie is more comfortable than the devastating truth. And that's what makes it so dangerous. People may desperately try to fill the void with reckless behavior, drug abuse, and even violence. No matter how many I killed, there was no end to the pain. The blades the force tore through my flesh. Take note that relationships are also often used to fill this void. The problem with it is that you're giving someone else, someone out of your control, the ability to hinder or destroy your goal of fulfillment. They could betray you. It is like a beloved pupil to whom you have shared everything, sacrificed everything, and then having them turn from you and forget all you were. This explains why a severed force bond results in the same feeling of emptiness. A bond between two living beings is not something easily broken. It is not a choice. It is like breaking a feeling, like turning away from the force. To break a bond, your feelings would have to change, or one of you would have to die. But even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply, it would simply be empty, a wound. Kreia experienced this type of wounding twice, or possibly three times. The first time was being excommunicated from the Jedi Order. The second time was when she was beaten and stripped of the Force by the Sith. The third time could happen if the Jedi Exile becomes another one of her failures. You have failed me completely and utterly. I have taught you to hear the Force again, shown you the contrast, and yet still you do not understand. Kreia must have realized that religion was not the answer for her. Perhaps she would need to find the answers within herself. She's not exactly the relationship type. I am too old for friends, and when the years settle upon you, you will dispense with such words as well. Betrayed by the Jedi, betrayed by the Sith, and betrayed by the Force. She does everything in her power to keep the Force as much away from her as possible without becoming a wound in the Force. Many are the times I meditate in the silence of my chambers. Do you know why I do this? I do this so that I might center myself. But Kreia is still human. She feels the void just as much as anyone else. And just like anyone else, she craves purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. I have thought of this moment more than you know. And I wondered if here, at this ending between us, if you would care enough to try to save me, if a Jedi could find it within themselves to spare one who has fallen so far. I wanted you to say those words. For that I am grateful. Then came the Jedi exile, someone who by teaching them can give her purpose. Calm yourself. This time silence your own thoughts, keep them still someone who can embody her teachings and prove that they are not flawed. That she was right, giving meaning to her life. I would have killed the galaxy to preserve you. I would have let the galaxy die. You are more rare than you know. Someone who can surpass her and make her hope again. Hope for the future is what she needed to finally achieve what we all seek. You are greater than any I have ever trained. By killing me here, 
You have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. Fulfillment 